A very good afternoon and thanks for clicking on to the Thursday edition of Vogan's European Outlook. It's a special day for a certain mum out there. I want to say a special um, shout out to Joyce, happens to be my mum, and uh, she is celebrating her 67th birthday today. So a very happy birthday to your mum. I uh, hope you're having a good day. I hope you enjoy a uh, a lovely meal tonight at Radstones in Stonehouse uh, with your friend Esther and my dad David. Um, certainly been a very interesting couple of years health wise. Um, my mum um, had a very uh, touch and go situation at the beginning of uh, of this year, and uh, quite frankly, we nearly lost her. So um, it is a very special day. Um, for not just her but also myself and my dad because um, it has been a, a pretty bumpy road but um, she's making a, a remarkable recovery after her time in the Queen Elizabeth at the start of the year um, you know an infection turned into um, other complications as well and um, you know she's doing she's doing remarkably well so um, happy birthday to your mum um, your picking up your pension as of today as well so uh, another milestone in in your life and um you know here's the many more um birthdays to come as well so happy birthday to you um looking at the um year to date temperatures uh, across europe we've got um a very warm uh, europe indeed and it looks as if uh, that doesn't look as if it's going to change anytime soon um, the UK and Central and Northern Europe uh, well in the orange colours they're representing above normal, below normal across the south of the continent as you can see here. Looking at the April anomalies here and um, we've kind of flipped things around, very cold start of the month uh, across the continent. Um, warm up previous 10-12 days now has turned that anomaly close to average to slightly above average if you notice here across the British Isles firmly below normal across Iberia and Central Europe as you can see here and um, it's going to be interesting to see where we go um, as we push into the month of May. Now the modelling has backed off quite significantly I think with regards to a plunge of Arctic air coming down week one of May we are going to get uh, chilly shots, um, but we're also going to get uh, intrusions of, of, of less um, colder from the Atlantic. Um, so it's going to be a, a, a relatively changeable theme through the upcoming bank holiday weekend. And uh, then on in the next week, we're going to get a couple of uh, intrusions of, of cooler air from the north here. But it's not going to be to any great uh, deal compared to what the modelling was suggesting a few days ago. Um, so we'll keep our eyes certainly on that um, in the coming days. But looking at the uh, CFSV2 here, this is the weeklies. And uh, week one, you can see here that the cold clings on to the UK. More so England, um, really actually, uh, Ireland and Scotland, the modelling indicates actually slightly warmer than normal. And I think a lot of the reason why is because we're still seeing that uh, kind of northeasterly wind um, keeping temperatures cooler in the east, warmer in the sheltered west, of course. We've got below normal across Scandinavia and um, Eastern Europe, as you can see here, Ukraine still um, in the chilly air, warmer than normal France and much of Spain and Portugal as you can see here, southeastern Spain down into um, into Libya is slightly below normal. But then as we pressed through, you can see here week two, so this is the period 4th to 11th of May, warmer than normal across the UK and then you notice here that the modelling indicates an increase in, in anomaly, warm anomaly at that uh, across the British Isles here and I do think I, my hunch is that we're going to start to see warmer air starting to progress up into the British Isles during the second half of the month. I think really the first half of the month it's going to be a bumpy road. I think we're going to have a, a, you know, a kind of push and pull, if you will, a little bit of a war between warm, trying to push north, cold, trying to linger uh, and come south here. But essentially what we're going to start to see is the Arctic Oscillation turning around to positive so uh, as you can see here of the modeling have I got this yeah 
This is of the ECMWF, and if I play through the loop, this is the Northern Hemispheric view. You see a lot of blocking here, west of the UK, extending up towards Greenland here. We've got a big negative here on the north coast of Russia. But as I play through this loop, this is a 10-day animation. You can start to see that the blues start to take hold over the Arctic region here. So that is the Arctic Oscillation starting to shift from negative currently to positive. And you can see here by the, the end of the 10-day loop, which takes in to, you know, what, day 8, 9, 10 of of May, we have lower pressure over the Arctic region and therefore higher pressure down in the middle altitude region that typically uh, kind of allows a greater potential for warmth uh, further south to try and lift north into the middle altitude pattern. So I think we're going to start to lose the blocking areas of high pressure and turn the pattern around here. You can see here off the GFS ensemble, we're negative at the moment, but we're climbing towards positive as you can see here towards the end of the loop. NAO is a little bit more complicated because you notice here that we are negative. It takes a kind of double dip, if you will. We've got this uh, drop off here from positive to negative. It tries to come up, then fails to do so, drops back, uh, back down, and then it tries to go back up towards neutral once again. But as a matter of fact, it actually stays below the neutral line, which is quite interesting here. And, uh, you know, like I say, it's, it's not a clear cut. Uh, forecast as we go into the month of May here. I think it's going to be quite a complicated mixed bag, if you will. The GFS, this is the 2 meter temperature normally chart here, and as I play through the loop, you can see here that they, you've got the waxing and waning of colder versus warmer than normal. But you notice here that there's intrusions of chill, chilly air coming down from the north, and by the time we reach you know, the end of week 1 of May, so this is the end of next week, it actually looks as if the chill tries to hold on over the British Isles. If you notice here, the blues are more dominant across the UK as opposed to the reds. However, the the ECMWF, if we play through the loop and get to the first back to the current period, we play through the same period here, and it actually looks as if reds are more dominant than than blues here. We can see here. As I continue to play through and we enter the same time frame as the GFS and it's actually showing warmer than normal lingering more than the colder than normal here so there's a back and forth I think over the next week to 10 days and of course the transition within the Arctic region changing the upper air profile from positive to negative it all takes a bit of time there then to work through that process to change the pattern so it's it's by no means a clear cut uh, you know simple process it takes a, a long time for the, the setup to change but I think once we do change I think we're hinting more towards a warmer driven pattern mid and late May and we could like I said in yesterday's video from Lockless Garnock that we could see a potential surge of summer heat I think you know you know, really from about the 15th onwards, I think there is a possibility that we could just all of a sudden go to, to kind of midsummer level warmth across the UK. So we'll certainly keep our eyes on that as we go forward here. But uh, I do uh, appreciate you continuing to stay with me on the channel here. We're going to continue to look at the, uh, you know, the, 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 the pattern as we go through the month of May. And then I'm going to be building my summer forecast uh, through the, the month of May itself, issuing and releasing that forecast on tomorrowfogandweather.com probably at the end of May. And we'll see how the, the upcoming summer forecast does go. If you're wanting to ask me the question, what do I actually think is going to happen this summer? It's very, very much open to question, if I'm being honest with you. I'm struggling to know whether to go for the warm dry because of course we're now ending another dry month of April we've had a very dry after a wet uh, February uh, which of course was dominated by low pressure and wind and rain and whatnot we've had a significant dryness uh, March through April and the question is going to be do we continue to see that during the month of May May can be a crucial month in determining in a sense what we may get later down the road and then of course we're going to continue to look at what next winter may bring as well because of course we've lost 
uh, you know, well, well, it feels like the atmosphere hasn't responded to that uh, uh, solar minimum that occurred a couple of years ago. And uh, are we going to start to go towards the maximum without seeing any true cold winter like we did see uh, during the previous solar minimum in, in 08, 09? So these are all things that I'm looking at at the moment, looking at the sun, looking at the response as it starts to waken up after the minimum and the impacts that may have on our short, medium and long range uh, climate as well so that's it for today thanks very much for watching do please like share and subscribe to the channel and i'll uh, try to be back again tomorrow if i don't i'll be back again on saturday bye for now